Hello, welcome to Toy Cafe. I am your host, and in this video today, we have a little witch's workshop. This is a little dollhouse that I put together myself, and I completely designed myself as well. I made this completely from scratch for Halloween, and I wanted to share it all with you now that uh, Halloween is coming up again. So, like any kit or dollhouse, it starts with a whole lot of cutting. I'm cutting foam board and some paper here. Foam board is a pretty good base for any little dollhouse you want to make, unless it's going to be played with a lot. Then you really want to use something like plywood or real wood or something like that, MDF. But where this is just meant to be looked at, foam board's good enough. The brick patterns that I'm gluing to my little pieces of foam board are actually patterns that I downloaded off of the internet, off of some sites that were meant for people who make video games. And they have lots of free stuff out there, real nice patterns. Maybe nothing that homey or cozy, but if you're looking for some bricks or some evil walls, probably the way to go. <laughs> so I'm glad those people are out there who uh, make those video games. And as always, I've printed these oversized and I'm gluing them to my foam board and trimming them down so I, we have a perfect fit. And now we're attaching all the pieces together so we have the basis for the room all ready to go when we're ready. A little too much glue there, oops. <laughs> no problem. Now we're starting with some popsicle sticks. You can actually make lots of nice stuff out of popsicle sticks if you prepare them properly. So first of all, I trim them down so they look like a board and then I use a pair of bypass pruners and use those to trim them off. It's pretty quick, pretty effective. You gotta be awfully careful with your fingers though. Don't wanna nip any of those off. And also sometimes you have to squeeze a little bit hard. So just be careful with that if you wanna try it. I find it works pretty well, but uh, not everyone agrees with me. So we're building a little tiny table here and we're just reinforcing the table because just a few popsicle sticks isn't really that strong, especially with a, just a little bit of glue. So doubled that up and I want it to be a trestle table because this is supposed to be a witch's workshop from way back when. So trestle tables were very popular in medieval times. So we're going to make it a trestle table just like that and all done. But that's not all. We're going to make some more furniture and I'm going to make a bookcase because we all know witches have lots of books to have all their magic spells and potion recipes written down in because who can remember all that, especially when they're old. Witches are always old. I wonder if there's ever a young witch. And this is actually a medieval style too called rail and panel. That's how most things were made out of wood back then. Yeah, a few more pieces to beef up the look. And now we're on to our next piece of furniture. <laughs> Uh, this is a book stand, so you can have a book open while you're reading it and, you know, preparing your potion. Those used to be really popular, but uh, you don't see them too much anymore. Now we're applying the paint. I was trying to get a real old, dirty table look. So I got a base coat down of sort of a dark wood color, and then I'm adding black on top because the only light source this witch has is a fire. So she's got lots of soot and smoke going through her workshop all the time and everything's just filthy. It gets all over her hands when she touches things and she never dusts because she's a witch. You know, she's too busy with other things. And we're adding a little detail here to our table. We're taking some red acrylic paint and some water to thin it out and mixing it right there on the table. Maybe I should have mixed this on a card first and then put it on the table, but I like, I like how it looked. Looks like a little pool of blood. So this is some plastic uh, mirror material that we got from the dollar store. It actually was a serving tray. It was meant to look like it was fine silver, even though it was made out of plastic. But I just cut a cleaver and a knife out of that, scratched them up so they looked a little bit rough, added some rust and some blood, dried blood. <laughs> Marvelous. Now this is a little plastic egg that was for uh, Easter decorations, kind of out of season. But I'm cutting this down and I'm going to make a cauldron out of it. And I got to tell you, if I'm going, if I ever was to do this again, I would use a saw, not the uh, scalpel or exacto knife to cut it into, because that was real hard, a little bit dangerous too. Yeah. And now we're adding some clay. I wanted the whole thing to look like the cauldron was made by the witch, like she was out there forming it with clay by hand, and she doesn't really have a spinning wheel or anything nice to make it with, so that's why it's all beaten up. 
She was just uh, using her hands and beating it with sticks to try to get it the right shape. Now we're making some brooms because every witch has to have a broom. I actually make two brooms. I think I like to, yeah, I think I like to imagine that one broom is the one she actually uses for sweeping when she has to. And the other one is the one she flies around on. See which, if you can guess which is which. Uh, this tiger grass is uh, actually used for brooms in the Philippines, and this grass came all the way from the Philippines. And that's something, the, uh, the little tiny broom here, the grass in it, has been halfway around the world. It's just amazing. <laughs> so here's the second broom. I do two twists of brass wire here to give it an extra little oomph, and trim the edge nice and sharp. Maybe make it look a little more like a broom from the Harry Potter books. Yeah, I think that looks pretty sharp there, nice and pointy. Yeah, not nice. Oh, and the handle's just a bamboo skewer that's been painted. So we're drilling a hole in the bottom of the cauldron here for some lights and adding black because this thing is going to have a fire under it all the time. It is going to be black, 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 and so dirty. So not a hint of white left. Well, inside, but you won't see that. So now I'm placing some holes for the LED lights so you don't see the wires. And uh, I'm just sort of placing the cauldron on the dollhouse floor and putting a hole where I think it looks nice. And I'm adding some more black paint. This is going to be more soot and ash. And this is right where the fire is all the time. So there is a lot of soot and ash. And you can see sort of streak marks where she's pulled some of the logs out because the cauldron's getting too hot and maybe she's sliding new wood in when it gets too cold. Kind of made the paper wrinkle a little, but that's okay because I wanted it to look really rough. So here we're stringing the LED wires, sliding them through that hole. I had to get two through there. My hole wasn't quite big enough. It was a little bit tight. And one of the LEDs has this red bead on top. You'll see that later. That, that came out pretty nice. And these are some more bamboo skewers with uh, black paint. Make them look like they're all charred and burnt. This fire is a little bit uh, getting on. It's starting to burn down a bit and there's really only charcoal left. But there's a lot of charcoal, so it's going to it's gonna simmer for a while. And we need some books for those bookshelves and everywhere else in the witch's workshop. So I wanted these to look fancy, so I made the covers out of cardstock. So they were extra thick and heavy, and I filled them up with just paper inside. And I kind of made them messy on purpose. I wanted it to look like the witch had gotten these books. She either made them herself and she didn't spend enough time on it, or... Maybe she stole them and they were really old books. Some beads there inside the cauldron. I didn't really have any epoxy or anything like that to fill up the cauldron with, so I just put the beads in there. Now here we have a nice piece of cloth, a fancy little base, and that is the witch's crystal ball. She's pulling out all the punches here. There are those knives sitting right on top of that uh, stain of blood on the table. I wonder what she's been working on there. And one of those dirty old books, because those are sooty too, because she, she doesn't wash her hands when she handles her books. It's just terrible. She's a really a evil witch. More of those dirty books going in there. This one did not want to cooperate. It must have been a book of evil spells. And some little skulls. We picked these up from the dollar store, and I thought they were just fantastic. So I put a whole bunch of those in there, along with more dirty books. That top book's really dirty. I wonder what happened to that. It probably fell in the fire. These are some regular beads with small metal beads on top to try to make them look like little bottles and full of potions and things. Yeah. And more skulls in there. I don't know where she got all these skulls from. These are, like, are these her victims or maybe their extended family? Her mother-in-law? <laughs> and, of course, being a witch, she has to dry her own herbs. If you want to get good magic herbs, you got to dry them yourself, so... She's got them hung up there on the wall. I imagine she's just sort of stuck a nail into the mortar between the bricks because she doesn't care about the brickwork and uh, just hung them from those. Get those brooms in the place. She's working on those. And ha there's her magic book open, ready to brew some potions on the stand. And she's, she's putting together some more brooms. She's got all the materials ready to go. More grass tied up there, so a stick. And there we have her little workshop all lit up. Look at that fire, an evil glowing cauldron. <laughs> I think that really turned out nice. It really looks like there's a, a fire burning down inside there. The cauldron isn't quite bright enough, but uh, I, I think it came together really nice. 
Looks like this witch is definitely very busy, even if her hands are very dirty and sooty all over that book. Just look at that. She needs to take care of her materials better. So there you have it. That's a little witch's workshop that was designed by me, and yeah, I'm quite happy with it. I like, uh, I like it when uh, something that I come up with comes together pretty well, and I think this one did. Yeah, the three amigos there on top of the bookcase. <laughs> Yeah, so I was quite happy with that, and uh, I hope you uh, liked seeing it too. And uh, if you did enjoy this, I hope you uh, would like to subscribe and uh, hit that little bell icon as well, so you know when the, all the other videos come out. And if you're interested in supporting us at, uh, well, me at Toy Cafe, it's really just me, um, I have some Amazon links down in the description there if you want to buy some of the materials that I use for making these dollhouses or anything at all. If you uh, want to send, uh, send a little help my way, that would certainly help out a lot. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.